For the second contribution from Longstone Community Council, this presentation traces the history of the Redhall Walled Garden, which since 1983 has been a horticultural centre providing a supportive environment for people with or recovering from mental health problems. My thanks and acknowledgement for the use of the following sources. Sam H's own notes on the walled garden, Lothian and Borders Geoconservation Leaflet, Geological Walk Historic Quarries, Red Hall, Malcolm Kant's book, Villages of Edinburgh, Volume 2, Chapter 6 on Longstone and Slateford, and Stuart Harris for the parish in the past, Slateford Longstone. Before the COVID pandemic, the seasonal open days were very enjoyable occasions for the Slateford Longstone community and those beyond, and the resumption of these is very much looked forward to. The Red Hall Walled Garden is managed by the Scottish Association for Mental Health, Sam H, and is located near Slateford, close to the A70 Lanark Road, the number 44 bus. Dating from 1755, originally it was the walled kitchen garden for Red Hall House, and the six-acre site is on a south-facing slope of the north side of the Water of Leith in the Craig Lockett Collington Dells. Just as one finds solace when pottering in one's own garden or allotment, Sam H also provides important aspects of therapeutic support through various forms of horticulture in this beautiful yet accessible setting. Red Hall House this is a sketch map of the lands of Red Hall and Heels. In 1755, the Red Hall estate was bought by George Ingalls and described in a crown charter of the Barony of Red Hall, Milnstone Quarry, Grays Milne, Coldham, Jinkaboot, Bogs Milne, Dovecot and Coat Houses in Powder Hall and in Slateford, together with the teens. George Ingalls, 1711 to 1785, was from a family of lawyers and minor gentry, his father having bought the estate of Ochundini near Pennycook. In 1758, the architect James Robertson was commissioned to design and build Red Hall House. This map of the mills on the Water Fleet from Slateford to Balerno shows that the mill nearest to the Red Hall Wall Garden was Jinkaboot Mill, which was also known as Lumsdane's Mill. From the early 1500s it had a variety of uses, as a corn mill and then as a paper mill, and from 1735 a barley mill. In 1755, however, the mill was demolished to make way for the walled kitchen garden for Red Hall House. The Kitchen Garden As the kitchen garden two centuries ago, it, this was essential for providing the daily and seasonal vegetables and flowers for Red Hall House, and from the glass houses and hot pits, exotic fruits such as tomatoes, grapes, melons and even pineapples for the family dining table. As a large site, its upkeep required the employment of several men, from the head gardener and under gardeners to the pot boys. At Red Hall, there were possibly six. The Victorian kitchen garden and the demands for the house and table. Some years ago, there was a very interesting television programme on the Victorian kitchen garden, which described in detail the daily weekly, monthly and annual regime in order to produce the potatoes, onions and root vegetables, as well as leeks and cabbages and runner beans, all of which can be seen in the Red Hall Walled Garden today. In addition to the vegetable production, flowers, both pot and cut varieties, were required, as well as those such as camellias and orchids, which were suitable for the ladies to wear as corsages. The tool house with the furnace. It's known that landscape gardening was a significant interest to George Ingalls, who was much involved in enlightened improvements, such as roads, bridges and agricultural reform, as well as beekeeping. In 1758, Robert Bowie, nurseryman, was commissioned to lay out the walled 
kitchen garden on the south-facing site of the former Jinkaboot Mill. The head gardener, James Whittet, who worked for the Ingalls family for over 30 years, was also fully engaged in the managing of the scenic walks and vistas, grottos, ornamental trees and shrubs, in addition to the cultivation of vegetables, fruit and flowers in the walled kitchen garden. The 18th century summer house or tool house. An attractive feature in the garden is the restored late 18th century brick summer house, which was originally the tool house for the gardener's equipment. But in the 19th century, it would also have been the place where the ladies from the grand houses of Craig Lockett and Red Hall would have walked or perhaps been driven to in a dog or governor's cart, not drawn by dogs but a pony, to enjoy an elegant afternoon tea party. The scenic walks and grottos. In Craig Lockett Dell there are two attractive grottos leading either up or down from Red Hall House and before demolition Craig Lockett House. These were usually pause points on an afternoon drive or a leisurely perambulation and often captured a romantic feature such as a waterfall as you can see here and they were often also decorated inside with shells. Traces of these can still be seen. A new example of this type of grotto is in the Royal Botanic Garden in the Queen Mother's Garden. David Chalmers of Red Hall, 1820-1899 Following the death of George Ingalls of Ochandini, the Red Hall estate passed to his nephew John, but as a serving officer, Navy, later an admiral, Red Hall House was tenanted by David Chalmers, the paper mill owner of Kate's Mill, having moved there from Kate's Mill House. After his death in 1899, his widow commissioned the building of Chalmers Memorial Hall in Slateford, in which the chimney piece displays a very fine bronze plaque of Chalmers by the Scottish sculptor Waller Hugh Payton. This building is at present being redeveloped as residential flats. The Walls to the Walled Garden In 1948, a report indicated that the gardens extended to two acres, approximately a third fruit trees and bushes, approximately a third vegetable ground, and a third is badly invested with herbarium weeds. There are two glass houses, one situated outside the southwest garden wall and approximately 50 feet of cold frames. However, the red brick walls with dressed sandstone piers now provide not only a practical enclosure, but also a distinctive one. The gates to the walled garden. Remains of the existing entrance gates can still be seen in the garden, but not quite in their original use. However, a single elaborate cast iron gatepost has been imaginatively used in the Joe Malone Herb Garden. The Herb Garden. Since Sam H. took over the management of the walled garden, a gradual and impressive transformation has taken place. One of the first of the special gardens within the garden was the Herb Garden, supported and encouraged with sponsorship from the perfumier Joe Malone who through the experience of her own medical condition was sympathetically understanding of the therapeutic benefits of herbs and the ethos of the walled garden. The Woodland Garden There are several other small gardens one might consider as rooms within the overall garden. These not only demonstrate specific environmental conditions but also provide quiet reflective spaces in which to sit or to wander. The vegetable garden. This area is well worked and very productive. A visit in late summer and one can applaud the devotion and the hard work of the gardeners. There is serious business too. Compost, seedlings and protection with some valuable instructions to the visitors as well. These take the form of useful information panels. The orchard within and outside the walls. 
In addition to the espalier fruit trees on the walls and the prolific apple orchard inside the garden, there is a second orchard outside the garden on the east side. This is an open area where walkers can enjoy the meandering paths to the water of Leith and the now well-tended apple orchard restored from abandonment over the past few years. Flower beds. While in the original garden flowers would have been grown for the use in Redhall House and Craig Lockett House to adorn the drawing room, dining table and ladies' boudoirs, as well as providing flowers for special occasions. Now the imaginatively laid out and planted flower beds make for a changing colourful display throughout the year. The sunflowers in September are spectacular. Additional funds are raised for the work of Sam H through the sale of plants, flowers and vegetables. The administration and visitor facilities. The initial porter cabin has now been added to with additional purpose-built units which are in keeping with the overall sustainability ethos of the project. The fun spaces. The exclusion of the public since March 2020 because of the COVID pandemic has prevented events such as the happy scenes and sounds of the families and friends that take place on the annual four open days. However, during this period, out with lockdown, the walled garden is open to the public on Friday afternoons from 1.30 to 3 o'clock and it makes for a very pleasurable afternoon outing. This is a garden that likes to be visited.